Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep worshiping the Lord for a moment. Somebody shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah, that's it. Let it go up before. Hallelujah. This is Independence Day weekend, and we thank God as citizens of this great nation for our liberty, independence, and freedoms that we have. But as apostolics, as Bible-believing children of God, our Independence Day is every day of our lives. Every day of our lives, the Word of God says, He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I ask you again, why don't you thank God and let's give God an apostolic worship full of praise for the liberty of the Spirit that He has given us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I thank God for allowing me to be here. I give honor to Bishop. I give honor to my family, Sister Cunningham and the family. I love and appreciate them. We're going to go right to the Word of God. I ask you to grab your Bibles. I'm not going to be before you long at all today. We're going to go right to Ezekiel chapter 16. I'm going to read a number of scriptures today, but for the text, just one. Excuse me, two script, uh, one verse. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 6. And it reads like this. And when I passed by you, you, and saw you polluted in your own blood. Everybody say own blood. I said unto you, when you were in your own blood, live. Yes, I said unto you, when you were in your blood, live. For my title this morning, simply this, God said live. God said, live. I should lay your Bibles down and lift up your hearts as we go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship and adore you, God. We thank you for your presence that we feel so strong in this house. Lord God, I pray, God, that you would anoint me, O oh God. Give me lips of clay, God. Speak through me, O oh God. Pour me out over your people, O oh Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you anoint the ears of every hero, O oh God. Lord, open our hearts to receive this word and apply it to our lives. God, today is a transformational day, O oh God, in the spirit. Lord, we bind and take absolute authority against everything that would stand against the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that your word go forth and we declare that it shall accomplish what you sent it forth to do and it shall not return unto your void. And all the believers said, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. God said, live. As I was studying in my devotional last week, I was reading uh, this chapter in the book of Ezekiel. And as I came to this scripture, I felt the anointing of God so heavy. Felt it so strong. Even to the point where I had to put the Bible down and I, I couldn't read any further. All I could do was lift my hands and begin to worship God. 
My eyes swelled with tears of gratefulness. Uh, My heart was so full that I felt like it was going to just explode. My mind's eye immediately uh, began to paint a very vivid picture of what I was reading. Amen. The scriptures I had just read uh, became very animated and and very much alive to me. uh, As I could literally see the words of the prophet Ezekiel in action. Is anybody uh, glad when you're reading the word of God to know that uh, God's word is a live word? It it, it is a living word. When we open up the word of God, we're not just reading ink on, on paper, but it is literally God reaching his hand through eternity into time for the point of inspiring us to accomplish his will right now. Amen. I I felt that's exactly what God was doing. Amen. He was letting me see myself in this parable. He was letting me see myself for the purpose of understanding uh, where I was at one time and also understanding where many others are right now. As I paused I began to consider, I said, God, you know, why would you use such descriptive words uh, to get a point across? And I realized it's because what God was saying through the prophet Ezekiel was literally a matter of life and death. You see, God was showing his chosen people the reality of their condition. And I believe it's the same for us today. We must allow this God-given memory, the ability to remember, coupled with the word of God, to serve as a reminder of what poor beginnings God raised us up out of. We must do that. In Ezekiel's writing here, God compared Jerusalem to an outcast child. A baby, if you will. A helpless, a helpless newborn baby. Picture that in your mind. Innocent in in nature. But polluted by its environment. And by circumstances. Born in poor conditions. And abandoned. Which no man had affection or concern for. Saints in 2020. God is trying to awaken his church to the condition of our fellow man. In this nation. And worldwide. I beg you. Open your eyes. Because now is the time. Now is the time. Today is the day. We must make haste. We must reach. And I'm not just talking about reaching for the sake of saying we did it. I'm talking about reaching with the anointing and the authority of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about reaching, pulling souls out of the grips of darkness and death. Because there is no other remedy. I said there is no other remedy for our global problems. Outside of apostolic preaching, outside of apostolic reaching, outside of apostolic praying, apostolic compassion, apostolic worship, and apostolic demonstration. There is no other remedy. Stop looking for one. It's not coming from D.C. It's not coming from the CDC. It's not coming from the military. It's not coming from the mayor. It's not coming from the government. Open your eyes to the only answer for this nation's problem and the global problems. It's you. It's what God has put in you. It's his word. It is this apostolic power. Somebody shout power. 
Hallelujah. John 9, 4 says, work while it is day. For night cometh when no man can work. So with that, I have several quick points in verses 1 through 6 of Ezekiel chapter 16 to see what God is saying to us here. The first point is we must wake them up to their condition. We must wake them up to their condition. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 1 says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. What God is saying to us now, Bible World Church, apostolics, again, cause the word, cause the man, if you will, to know her abominations. I want you to notice the first word was again. Again means to revisit. Go back. See, sometimes we can get frustrated with the first no. We can get frustrated with the first, I don't want to hear that. I'm not about that right now. I'm doing my own thing. I ain't got time for God. But God says, go back again. You need to go back to your family members again. You need to go back to your neighbor again. You need to revisit again and let them know their abominations. God wasn't just saying, inform them of their sins. But he said, let them know their abominations. Abominations are the things that the Lord hates. To me, that is saying it's the mindset. And it is the spirit that drives the action to sin. Let them know about the spirit that is at work. It's the same in the world and in our nation today. The spirit of that is in the world is that of antichrist. It is anti-truth and it is anti what is holy. The problem is that so many have taken on this end time spirit. I'm sorry to say even among some uh, so-called Christians have taken on this spirit of the world. This end time spirit of the age. And I believe it is the reason for the unrest, the violence, the hopelessness. And the fear that has taken hold of so many. What is God saying? God is saying apostolics don't get your eyes locked in on their behavior. But we need to pull back the curtains of scripture and allow God to reveal to us the spirits that are at work. First John 4 says, beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. Brothers and sisters, we've got to be careful that we are not mimicking every word that comes from the world in these times. Be careful what you copy and paste. Because every word that comes from the world has a spirit behind it. And it's most often not the spirit of God that we confess. We cannot just regurgitate words and catch phrases to make our points. Assuming that because we confess to be Christians that God somehow will put his stamp of approval on it. Saints, in order for us to speak life, we must... Speak only with the inspiration of the life-giving spirit. That's right. That needs to be channeled through the spirit that gives life. We can't speak to dead people in dead situations and giving them a dead word. You want to speak to a person that's in a dead situation, you got to speak words of life. And God says, the words that I speak to you, they are life. 
We got to channel what we say through the spirit of God, not through the spirit of the world. Because we will be regurgitating death upon people that are already the walking dead. Come on, let's speak life. God told us in the end of 2019, speak words that encourage. Speak life. Speak life. Speak what the Spirit gives. Don't speak what the government says. Speak life. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Ezekiel 16. Says and say. Thus saith the Lord God. Unto Jerusalem. Thy birth. And thy nativity. Is in the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite. And thy mother. A Hittite. Speaking of Jerusalem. Indeed. Abraham and Sarah with the patriarchs of God's people that dwelt in Canaan. But observe, they did so as sojourners. They were strangers in Canaan. They had no possession. They had no power. i say it again. They had no possession. They had no power. Apostolics, this is the condition of your neighbor today. The cashier at the grocery store. The young man that cuts your lawn. The person that waters your yard. The protesters in the streets. And yes, even the rioters. That's right. Even them. They have no power over sin. They have no power over the flesh. They have no power over the enemy of their soul. Now, I know some may think, well, as us, us, as people of God, we are really the strangers and sojourners in this world. That's really just talking about us. But can I remind you, apostolic, that this world in its hellish condition is not what God created it to be. And there is not one, not one. Not one man or woman created in the image of God that he intended to live and die in a fallen state. So that means that they are strangers and sojourners as well. So what God is saying to us is tell them, God said, live. Yes. Even with death all around them, dead dreams, dead hopes, dead outlooks, dead situations, God said, live. Tell them that you can live. Need to understand that furthermore, as strangers, Abraham and Sarah had not one foot of ground that belonged to them, except A place to be buried. Think about that. Now I know the song says that we're soldiers to soldiers and strangers just passing through. And we are as believers. We're passing through. We are passing through. There is a hope that is within us. That when we go through this place, we are going to another place. But there are strangers other strangers here that have no hope to go through all they have in the land is a place to be buried they have no hope of an inheritance of another land just a burying place as Abraham and Sarah were in a strange land they had no possessions of their own no land but a burying place. What that says to me is they had no inheritance, nothing to look forward to except death. Death was their inheritance. And likewise, just like you and I at one time, the only inheritance passed to the lost from their patriarchs, Adam and Eve, 
is just that. An expectation of death. That's why they say things like life is tough. Life is a struggle. And then you die. Because that's the only expectation they have. To live the struggles in this life and then have a place to die. See Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed unto all men, for that all have sinned. But to those of us that live, there is an inheritance of hope, the inheritance of eternal life. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of your inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise of his glory. Titus 3.17 says, because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Secondly, second point is set them free. This is Independence Day. God is saying, go out of here, set them free. For those that are here and those that are watching, it's Independence Day. You can be set free today. Those here today that have not been set free by the blood can be set free today. Verse 4 says, and as for thy nativity, thou was born, thy navel was not cut. Neither was thou washed in water to supple thee or to cleanse you. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. I want you to notice it said, thy navel was not cut. Think about this baby. Umbilical cord still connected. Bloody, unclean, tossed out into the middle of the field. I believe what God is saying to us is remember there was a time that exactly what you and I were born in is exactly what we remain connected to. There was nothing that came that separated you and I from what we were born in. That sin. And like the Lord is saying, those, there are those that are in that field still connected by that umbilical cord, not separated, not liberated from the sin and the stain of sin. This is what David said in Psalm 51, 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Imagine, if you will, God saying this baby born with an attachment to sin and death and the very cord that God intended for the purpose of providing life-giving nutrients, providing oxygen and the things needed to sustain life actually was turned into an avenue to pump poison into every human being by way of sin. Think about it. Not only was the umbilical cord not sever of sin not severed, but there was no water present to clean the stain of sin passed by human birth. What stains? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says fornication, idolatry, adultery, effeminacy, abusers of themselves with mankind, thievery, covetousness, drunkenness, revelry, extortion. And such were some of you. <laughs> but you are washed. God said you are washed. I'm so thankful that God came and sanctified and justified me in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. 
Somebody ought to give God praise that you have been severed. That God came by and said, let me do a circumcision here, severing and separating you from that cord of sin, washing you in the water. Thirdly and lastly, as apostolics, don't pass by without giving the message. Don't pass by, literally, without giving the message. Ezekiel 16 and 5 and 6, he said, No, I pity thee. No one looked at you and felt sorry for you. No one felt bad for that baby there in that condition to come to them and to do any of these things to them, clean them up, take care of them. He said, none had compassion upon thee, but you were cast out in the open field to the loathing and the crying of yourself in the day that you were born. But I'm so thankful. God said, but when I passed by you. Now, more than ever, apostolics, we must be moved with apostolic compassion. We must be moved with apostolic compassion. Not just the nominal Christian passion. I'm not talking about the passion where we just give somebody a dollar here and there and to appease our conscience or give them a can of food. But I'm talking about apostolic compassion. Apostolic compassion will look at the soul condition. It doesn't just look at the outward condition. It looks at the soul condition. That's apostolic compassion. Look back at the messages that have been preached. Don't forget your benefits, apostolic. Don't forget the benefits that you have. Don't forget that we care, apostolic. Don't forget that we are united, apostolics. Now is not the time for us to turn a deaf ear to the cries of unfamiliar voices. This is the unprecedented time prophesied by the man of God. Now is the unprecedented opportunity that we all shouted and danced about December of 2019. Now is it. My God, think about this. Six times in two Gospels, the Scripture says that Jesus saw the condition of man and he was moved with compassion. Six times in the Scripture. I oftentimes wondered how in the world was it that multitudes followed Christ, multitudes of disciples followed him, three, excuse me, twelve Disciples followed him closest to him for three years. And not one time in scripture did it say the disciples were moved with compassion. Not one time. He said it in front of them. He did it in front of them. He was moved with compassion. Let it not be said that the apostolics of Bible World Church walk by they watch bishop cunningham moved with compassion they watch the pastors and the ministers moved with compassion and not let it be said that the apostolics of bible world church watch the man of god do it watch the preachers do it watch the evangelism pastor do it but they were never moved with compassion <sighs> being moved with apostolic compassion means being moved with action. Apostolic compassion is a compassion of action. I see it now in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 6. And when I passed by you, God said, I saw you polluted in your blood. I didn't see you in my blood. I saw you in your blood. 
the sinful blood. He said, and I said unto you, when you were in your blood, live. There's a baby there, polluted, born, polluted in his sin, connected to sin, not severed from sin. Live! Live! The transliteration of the word live is haya. Now here's what's amazing. When I read that in the scripture, and I know what everybody thinks about. They think about their, their kids. My, my kids were off with some fireworks last night. Had some little suicide. name. Hiya, hiya. A karate thing. But that ain't what it was talking about. As soon as I read that, I felt the Holy Ghost. I said, my God, there have been so many times that I've been in apostolic services. And the Spirit of God has moved. And I've heard the saints of God begin to speak in other tongues. And worship God. And I've heard that sound before. I've heard people say, Oh, you didn't know what you were saying. But what God was saying to us is apostolics. It's time for you to pronounce for somebody to live. God is saying live. Live. You didn't realize it. But God it was in here speaking through us. Saying live. Prophesy to the atmosphere. Live. Oh, oh, hallelujah. You see, the word live means to revive. I feel this, y'all, excuse me. It means to revive or make alive again. Make alive again. So when God walks by and he looked at us, he's telling us to look at them and tell them, be restored to life. Be restored to God consciousness. Be restored to strength and be restored to a flourishing condition. Can I tell you when you and I were born, it was a stillborn birth. Born dead. This is why Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, 7, Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. As I'm closing here, you can say it. God is saying, live. God said, live. It's time for us that have been made alive to speak life. Apostolics, we are standing in the middle of a world of dry bones. Just like the prophet Ezekiel, we are standing in the middle of a world of dry bones. Lord, let the spirit of Ezekiel get on us, God. Let the spirit of Ezekiel get on us, God, that we can prophesy, live, hallelujah. The media says die, but God's word says live. Racism and bigotry say die, but love says live. COVID-19 and disease says die, but miracles and healing say live. Fear says die, but hope and faith say live. Hell and demons say die. But heaven and the angels shout, live. Oh, there's some apostolics that will shout, live. Say it again, live. Shout it again. Hallelujah. Clap your hands up to God. Hallelujah. Come on, shout that. That sounds good. Shout it again. Shout it again! Shout it again!
thing moved on me so heavy. God said, live. God said, live. I was just trying to preach it to excitement and emotionalism today. I'm trying to preach it to transition. I'm trying to preach you not to your emotions. I'm trying to preach you to transition. The Lord gave me this word. I feel it's a prophetic word. We are in the end times. Slow down here. This is it. This is it. The times are shortened. Literally, God has been showing me family members, people in the world, just lost. I see it so vivid, just lost. And God says, we're in a transition time. When God told the man of God that he set before us a door, we walk through the door. It was walking through transition. Hear me. The message has not, will not, cannot, shall not change. The message will not change. But the method has changed. Look around. Look around. The method has changed. Not going back. When the Lord showed me himself walking through the field, pointing at the baby, God says, I'm trying to transition you to this point where you will walk. And you won't pass anybody by with the message. Notice in the scripture, it didn't say that the Lord went over and picked up the baby, washed him off, wrapped him up, salted him. It didn't say God did that. He only said live. God saying, apostolics, if you walk by, all you have to do Say live. Half of you believe that. The other half didn't respond to the miraculous because that's a miracle. This is the time for you as an apostolic to point at a person and say live. God said live. Oh, hallelujah. That's what it takes. That's what God says do. Don't walk by without giving the message. The message is, God said, live. And the dead man is going to say, tell me how to be born again. Tell me how I can live. But it's not going to happen unless you and I walk by and say, live. Glory to God. Come on, raise your hands all over this house today. Let's lift our hands. I want us to fill this sanctuary with prayer. Come on, let your voice be heard. Lift it up this morning. God had a word for you. He had a word for me. And that word was to live. God is prophesying to his church. He's reminding of us of the power. He's reminding us of what called us out of our own sin, out of our own calamity, out of our own illness. He's washed us off. He told us to live. He's given up a message to tell others to live. Lift your voice right now. Come on, I know we, didn't, can't, we can't come to the altar, but you can make your seat an altar. Wherever you are, you can make your seat your altar. You can close your eyes and lift your hands and raise your voice. God said, live. I heard him this morning. I heard the word so clear this morning. God, I receive your message. I receive your message to live. God, I receive that message, Lord God. You told us to live. You called out to us, God, when we were sick, when we were in sin, when we 
were dead, when we were in our own blood, when we were deceived, when we were polluted, when we were corrupted, when we were bound, when we were in bondage, Lord God. But you told us to live, God. You liberated us, God, through the word of life. You told us to live, God. I'm not going to walk by my brother. I'm not going to walk by my sister. I'm not going to walk by the protester. I'm not going to walk by my neighbor. I know, Lord God, that the message for us is to tell them to live, Lord God. Apostolics, lift your voice this morning. God is going to use you. He's going to use you to speak life to this world in the name of Jesus. The world's been talking way too loud. It's time for the church to lift up their unified voice. It's time for us to have our own message. We need to tell the world to live. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What an anointed message. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Miller, thank you for that word, my Lord. My Lord, I am so glad that I came to the house of the Lord this morning to receive that encouraging and edifying word reminding me that I need to tell myself, first of all, that God told me to live. And then I need to tell my brothers and sisters and those out in the world that the church, we have a message. We have a message for this world, and it is a message to live. Praise God. It's also not lost on me that in our Bible world church, our rule of five, the first word that we begin off in our rule of five is that word live. It's on this banner right here to my right, your left, live. So we're in the perfect will of God. We're in alignment with the pastor. We're in alignment with the bishop. We're in alignment with the word of God. Hallelujah. Live. That's the message. That's the charge that we have. And we need to take this message out there into the highways and the byways. Praise God. We want to remind you that as we close uh, in prayer today, that we are asking you to honor our guidelines uh, from the from the COVID and whatnot. We always enter from the front of the building. We exit here from my rear uh, to the, these exit doors here. There's also going to be some ushers that will be in place, and there's offering baskets by the door. So if you have an offering or a tithing slip or something that you want to place in that basket, we want to remind you to do the, do so. Also, please let me remind you, when you are walking around the church, even on the way out, we are asking you to wear your mask on the way out and we're finally asking you also not to congregate it's very difficult to resist the urge to kind of gather together in a group and and bump fists or bump elbows and whatnot and just kind of chit chat but we are asking that everybody exit the building without congregating uh, as best as possible let's close in prayer there have been many needs that have been brought before you that need prayer and we're going to ask that God move in those situations and also ask that this word that we heard this morning be applied to our lives and that we can live it out there in the world. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love and mercy, for your grace and truth. God, we thank you. We don't take for granted this Independence Day weekend, Lord God, and this message of liberation and life, Lord God, that came this morning through the man of God. We pray that the word will be applied to our lives. Lord God, touch our families. Lord God, all those who are watching at home, Lord God, watching this live feed or who are watching this broadcast some later time, we pray that the same message of liberty and life, Lord God, would extend forth, Lord God, through whatever device or means that they're using, Lord God, to contact your word. And we pray, God, that you be glorified in the name of Jesus. We love our church, our friends, and our family. We pray, God, that you move in in our behalf with every need and every situation. Touch those that are sick and bring healing to them. In Jesus' precious name, amen. One more time, happy Independence Day. We love you. In Jesus' name, you are dismissed.